as a discussant uh, for this session organized by Ian and Craig Greg for the um, area chair 10 let me first thank them for setting up this session because I think uh, certainly the topic of web literacies is an extremely important one for LRA members to consider period understanding the nature of these web literacies uh, is central to literacy research and the need for more research on this topic period let me also thank uh, Doug Belshoff for being the invited speaker and for providing us with some insightful uh, comments and uh, perspectives on how people acquire these different web literacies and the need for a more research on this topic. Comma, as well as the role of the Mozilla Foundation in forwarding um, instruction related to uh, use of the web, period. I think understanding some of uh, Doug's comment requires some background uh, associated with his, uh, his book, which is free for download. Um, the Essential Elements of Digital Literacies. And in that book, he, uh, he notes that um, it's important to think about the skills associated with use of the uh, web as occurring in a context of how users are purposefully um, responding to and using uh, the web. He also notes that these literacies um, are plural and not neutral, and that it's important to think about how differences in power, identity, and political ideology influence use of these literacies, as well as the fact that there's really a continuum, it's not an either-or matter, of continuum of different competencies associated with uses of the uh, web. And that finally that these literacies are taught um, when the learner sees the bigger picture of how and why they are using the web um, for learning. He also in his book talks about the essential digital literacies uh, involved in web literacies. And those include the cultural, certainly the ways in which local cultures shape differences in uses of the web. The comma, the cognitive, the ways in which the metacognitive processes involved in using the web is really important. The comma, the constructivist or constructive ways of creating text on the web. Uh, for example, digital storytelling, comma. The commutative uh, functions of the web, how people use the web to communicate out their ideas to not only local but global audiences. The importance of the being confident in acquiring agency through the use of the web, comma. The creative aspects of the web evident in um, some of the interesting creative videos that appear on the web, comma. The critical aspects of use of the web where it's important to stand back and critique of uh, the kinds of web assumptions on the web. And finally, the civic aspects of uses of the web, how the web can foster uh, civic engagement. I think uh, in thinking about these different uh, aspects of the web, it's important to think about how we um, are contextualizing or recontextualizing uses of the web 
And I want to note here the work of Van Leeuwen's the concept of recontextualization, where we're constantly recontextualizing text on the web. And in doing so, we're um, seeing connections uh, between the web content. And this reflects a connectivist notion of learning that Stephen Downs notes that knowledge is a network phenomenon so that to know something is to be organized a certain way and to exhibit patterns of connectivity. So to learn is to acquire patterns. This is true for the community as it is for the individual. So I think what this is saying is we need to be thinking about the ways in which learning occurs through and on the web as a connectivist process. Um, so for example, seeing how through nexus analysis, certain memes pop up and prevail on the web, certain images, uh, as in the case of the I Hate Sandcastle Success Kid, uh, who uh, was a sort of web image that served as a meme that would um, cut across text. And so people then take these images and recontextualize them in different ways. And so that reflects the kind of creative aspects of what Doug was talking about, as well as the ways it communicates uh, in interesting ways. I think another important thing I want to say about web literacies is that um, we need to think about the relationship between the web and now the use of apps because I think the use of apps is a whole other area that is emerging and how it relates to the web is an interesting question. Um, certainly these apps have certain affordances and these affordances are associated with the activities that uh, are involved in use of apps, um, apps such as VoiceThread, uh, screencasting apps, um, collaborative writing apps, and so on, period. And these affordances, as indicated in this image, uh, include multimodality, uh, collaboration, interactivity, uh, ubiquity, authenticity, uh, shared productivity, uh, portability, and then personalization. And these different affordances are very much tied to certain literacy practices that themselves may also be tied to certain, um, certain web literacies. And I think in thinking about these apps, we need to also think about the fact that a lot of these apps, nearly as McLean argues, they replicate sort of status quo, textbook, worksheet, flashcard kinds of learning uh, as opposed to the ways in which they may extend learning in unique ways, what McLean calls extender apps um, that extend the learning in ways that are not otherwise possible without the app technology. And so I think this distinction would also apply to uses of the web in which the question is, well, um, can't you just, you know, use the traditional print literacies to foster certain kinds of learning, period. Then, comma, what is the ways in which the web literacies have their own unique uh, affordances that foster certain kinds of learning that would not occur otherwise? Just an example of this um, kind of learning in terms of collaboration. This is an image of a discussion about uh, the Malo uh, Site and Observatory in Hawaii. And this is a sticky note uh, discussion um, by some students about the observatory. And you note here there's an interesting back and forth in this discussion of the observatory 
and it's mediated by the use of this sticky note um, sticky note uh, tool on Bigo that fosters this kind of interaction. And you also find this with annotations on websites like Rap Genius, uh, where you might have a annotation of a um, Kurt Cobain letter. You also find this on um, tools such as VoiceThread, where you have collaborative annotations about the same image. Um, and I think this leads to another important aspect of this, the ways in which uh, the web can be used to remix or, again, recontextualize images. And on the Mozilla Teaching Kit site, there is an example of a remix tool for critiquing gendered ads where the students would remix traditional hegemonic uh, gendered ads in new ways. Um, another example of this would be the use of collaborative responses to a text on a wiki. <clears throat> and this is from uh, Teresa Dodson's research uh, where the students created wiki annotations to a Alice Monroe story. And each of these little uh, blue um, Annotation notes reflect a sub-story that they embedded into the main story. Um, let me now shift to what I think is needed in terms of some research. And I think one whole area of research in understanding the web and web literacies is the use of digital uh, big data analysis tools, such as those available on voyeurtools.org where people can analyze the ways in which um, users respond to and create text on the web. And in this case, uh, looking at uh, not only sort of word choices, but also word choices over time. In this case, how certain words in Moby Dick are used in frequency. Now, you can certainly create a word cloud, but you can also look at changes over time in the use of words uh, such as uh, whale and Ahab and so on. And I think the, the way this is relevant and useful is that it helps us understand um, text and uses of text as a, through web analysis. There's also uh, the need to think about, here's an example of the changes in the use of the word whale and Ahab. There's also a need to understand how um, readers, uh, users make connections. And this is a study from the Stanford Lursey Lab where they studied uh, readers making connections uh, on Amazon in response to Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace, who would, there's a side, also a new movie about that novel, and how um, readers make connections with certain topics or themes or other texts. And so this is a way the web may facilitate and mediate intertextual connections, and this kind of analysis captures that. Um, Here's an example of analysis of reviewers' connections uh, with infinite jest to uh, other text. And I think, again, this kind of analysis helps us understand the intertextuality of learning. And having an understanding of this then helps us understand how re readers are using the web. Another topic I want to bring up here is the ways in which there is now an interesting potential shift from Web 2.0 learning. And this is some work by some Iranian researchers uh, where we're looking at the web primarily now as Web 2.0, which is certain HTML text are linked together as documents. And we see these links. And a lot of this has to do with um, thinking about the web primarily as a repository of documents that are sort of out there. However, they recommend that